Concealment and trickery are required of all soldiers. We sharpshooters must become masters of these things. Here, a German sniper who has skillfully worked his way up moves carefully into position. Suddenly, Bolsheviks turn up. The fever of the hunt, a too rapid movement, and a Bolshevik sniper spots his mark. A hit! Sharpshooters, your training must be careful and precise. Only then will you be superior to our cunning enemy. In the countryside, the sniper must first of all try to take in every detail. Here, for example, he sums up the landscape according to its most noticeable features. A single bush. A grove. three trees in the foreground. In order to remember the landscape, the sniper must plant this image in his mind. Sehen Sie sich genau den Waldrand an. Es werden Veränderungen vorgenommen. Haben Sie sich alles genau eingeprägt? Wohl auf, Herr. Alles in Deckung. Alles vorkommen. Drei Veränderungen haben wir vorgenommen. Ganz links jetzt eine Schutzschneise. Der Baum liegt jetzt nach links. Eine Baumkrone im Vordergrund rechts abgebrochen. By comparison, here's how the forest edge looked before. Now, for some finer changes in a meadow, this will require a trained eye. Auf dieser Wiese, drei Veränderungen. Da hinten der Maulwurfshügel war nicht da. Im Vordergrund eine Schleifspur in der Wiese. Vorn der Buchsbaum war nicht da. Buchsbaum wächst nicht auf Wiesen. Spotting such alterations is especially important. Significant conclusions can be drawn from such details. For example, a broken off treetop is never found on the edge of a forest. A sniper notices this and first examines the row of trees. All trees have tops. But this one? Isn't that the top of the pine tree? A Bolshevik is using it for cover. He's spotted and killed. And here, a meadow with average growth. Fällt Ihnen in diesem Gelände etwas auf? Sehen Sie es mal genauer an. Jawohl, geradeaus Sauergräser, die sonst nur auf dumpfigem Boden wachsen. Jetzt bewegen Sie sich. The sniper must notice just such obscure details. 
he must acquire that primitive feeling for nature characteristic of the hunter. Even the slightest changes must be perceived by the sharpshooter. Isn't a bush moving here? Well, make sure. Rise carefully. If it doesn't look the same as at first glance, hang on and keep watching. Such observation requires much patience. But this time, success isn't long in coming. A telescope becomes visible. Immediately, the sharpshooter appraises his observations. Time, place, and type of observation are recorded along with distances. To remain unseen while observing, the sniper can use a trench mirror. It can be made into a makeshift periscope with a top and camouflage to protect against glare, which could otherwise give one away. Thus is the area watched. Hold the mirror steady. Don't jiggle it. And there's the enemy, clearly visible. From these bushes, a bird suddenly flies up. The cause? An enemy. When a target is recognized, it must be dealt with quickly. Geradeaus, 300, ein auffallender Baum. In der Krone, feindlicher Schütze. Zu wenig. Ein Scharfschütze muss seine Ziele viel genauer bezeichnen. Sehen sich den Baum näher an. Geradeaus, 300, kegelförmige Akazie. Schon besser. In the woods, in a maze of reference points, targets must be quickly identified and dealt with. Geradeaus, 70 Meter, nach links geneigter Baumstamm. Rückwärts Hügel, dahinter ein feindlicher Schütze. Rechts daneben ein dürrer Busch. Sprechen Sie ein Ziel an und führen Sie uns darauf zu. Halb links. Halt! Was war daran falsch? Man darf mit der Hand nie in die Richtung zeigen. Richtig! Auch die kleinste Bewegung kann die Stellung verraten. Nearer the enemy, the sniper must move extremely carefully. Avoid loud talking. Signaling should be by sign or animal sounds. The cry of the wild dove attracts no attention in the forest. That means straight ahead. In the birch, up above, a rifleman. Other signs, attention, I must get closer, M, G, P, K, meaning anti-tank gun, P, Z, Panzer, sniper, 
Advance. Withdraw. 100. 10. Three hundred. Every sniper team can arrange its own signals. In characterless terrain, a visual sweep makes targeting easier. Here, the same terrain is shown once more. Reference points, half to the right, 80 meters, earthen mounds. To the right, 100 meters, two bushes. Especially important to the sniper is estimating distances. Focon. Neben den allgemeinen Grundsätzen muss der Scharfschütze Feinheiten beim Entfernungsschützen beherrschen. Sehen Sie sich mal diesen Schützen an. Entfernung? 200. 250. Zu kurz geschätzt. 300. Alles kehrt. Entfernung dieses Schützen? 400. 370. Alles falsch. Auch dieser Schütze ist 300 Meter entfernt. Nur weil er kleiner ist, erscheint er weiter weg. Gut war, dass einer einen Zwischenwert gegeben hat. 370. Der Scharfschütze muss auch noch Zwischenwerte angeben lernen. Nicht nur abgerundete Zahlen schätzen. Weiter also. Entfernung bis zu dem Haus. 400. 430. 470. Falsch. Weil man die Dinge im Liegen zu groß sieht, schätzt man zu nah. Entfernung bis zu dem Haus 500. Also, estimating from below up to the top of a tree must be practiced. Usually, it's guessed too far. Looking down from a tree, distances are estimated too closely. The light-sensitive sight of the scope makes accurate shooting in twilight or shadow possible. Estimating in twilight demands much practice. Here, suppose that this is an enemy rifleman. Here are the bearing grid marks of the scope. The enemy rifleman is five lines high. Therefore, according to the formula, the target height equals 1.7 meters. Multiplying this by 1,000 and then dividing by five reveals that the enemy rifleman is 340 meters away. When on defense, in order to become familiar with the terrain before him, the sharpshooter draws a target and distance sketch. This sketch includes all noticeable landmarks from left to right with their ranges. He's then ready to quickly destroy any suddenly appearing targets. The sniper must never be moving around in the terrain. Then he'll never be seen or heard. While on offense, the sharpshooter must perceive at a glance the path that will allow the most stealthy advance. That means glance and glide. Centimeter by centimeter, the sniper must crawl forward. He must always be careful to remain unseen himself while continuing to watch everything around him. So geht das nicht. Kopf immer tief. 
den ganzen Körper förmlich an den Boden pressen, Ellenbogen flach am Körper entlang ziehen, also gleiten, nicht troppen. <lacht> Dafür geht das Hinterteil jetzt hoch beim Tapfelwurm. Na, Sie haben ja jetzt selbst gehört, wie das krachte. Also, nicht gesehen und auch nicht gehört werden. Kopf zu hoch. Das Gras bewegt sich. Gewehr wird falsch getragen. Die natürliche Deckung nicht ausgenutzt. Diese Stelle ist vom Feind eingesehen. Und so wird dieser Weg richtig zurückgelegt. Unter Ausnutzung dieses Grabens bis zu dem Baum. Dann runter durch die Mulde. Therefore, body flat, elbows not held up, no movement of grass, natural cover exploited, down into the shadowy overgrowth of the hollow. And here, away from the position seen by the enemy. That's how a sharpshooter stalks. When crossing a clearing, look for the place where the crossing is most narrow. If possible, in a low spot. The rifleman continues along the opposite edge of the clearing. Always on the watch keeping an eye on the clearing. Here the clearing is narrow, also a little sunken. The sharpshooter uses this advantage and crosses the clearing unseen. Sharpshooters must literally melt into their surroundings. That's wrong. The movement is far too upright. The enemy would have to notice this jiggling bush. Here, one could ask where the sniper he's stalking is. There, something's moving. And here's the explanation. A blind camouflaged with plants that grow in the meadow. Here's what the blind looks like, uncamouflaged, made from wire. The camouflage must always correspond to the terrain. In this way, the rifleman will not be seen by the enemy. There are lots of ways to build blinds. They can usually be improvised with the most ordinary materials. Imagination plays an important role. This camouflage net is designed for observing from a stationary position. It's laid over the head 
and offers total concealment. And here is a camouflage mat that's put on like a coat. And where's the soldier with the mat? The camouflage umbrella is indispensable. Here it's spread open. The camouflage naturally corresponds to the surroundings. And now for the practical application. Five men with umbrellas are working their way forward. And here they are. From the enemy side, unseen. And here are various types of camouflage umbrellas. A little wood, string, and wire is all the soldier needs, and this material is plentiful. Another good camouflage is the so-called Indian bonnet. It's made from a wire frame pulled over the head. Every turn of the head is effectively concealed. Once again, the camouflage is invisible. Even from a few yards away. The camouflage must be as complete as possible. This soldier seems well concealed. but the slightest light spot is visible from a great distance. A little grass suffices to keep him hidden. Or here, despite the rest of the cover, the hands and face shine rather brightly. Smearing with dirt helps somewhat. But not for long, since dirt wears off. Soot works best. Camouflage glasses are good cover. 
Wire can be easily shaped and draped with weeds. so that only the eyes remain free. The helmet net obstructs telescopic shooting. And so does the mosquito net. Watch for little details like the glint of a telescopic lens that can give you away. Slit lens covers made from paper avoid reflection. The use of slit lens covers does not obstruct the telescopic field. When possible, place slit covers over the telescope lens like so. Even when the soldier is well concealed, his weapon can still give him away. This is how a well camouflaged weapon should look. But be careful, keep the muzzle and bolt action free. The skilled soldier wears camouflaged gloves and a mask that he stitched together himself. The camouflage is complete when the soldier literally becomes a part of his surroundings. Who would spot a sniper on the watch in this little grove? This camouflage is only good for observing, not for shooting. And who would suspect a German sharpshooter among this tangle of trunks? In rocky regions, an artificial pile of stones offering good cover can be made from a wire frame and painted paper. The long tress mantle is hung on. The net-like tress mantle has the advantage that camouflage matching the terrain can be struck in the mesh. When standing erect to observe the terrain better, the sharpshooter needs especially good camouflage. 
With his modern camouflage cap on, this sniper is not seen. It's especially important for the observer. Here's how the frame looks. Two wires banded together with strong branches. A complete means of camouflage is the net suit. Where is he? Hey, man, pass it off. Oh, here steaks too. Here is a well camouflaged soldier, but an observant enemy could still spot him. He cleared material for his camouflage next to where he wants to stand. That's wrong. Dead leaves for camouflage are useless since they give away the position. The sniper must be trained to take in the terrain and mentally divide it into sectors at a glance. This side is mildly suitable for creeping forward. The middle, totally unsuitable. Not here. This side with thick bushes and gullies is best. So the most favorable path can be picked out at a glance. From cover to cover, out of the enemy's view, to the chosen spot. The sniper's position must be unseen and must also offer excellent protection from shrapnel. No one would suspect a rifleman here. A free field of fire is a natural prerequisite. An even better idea is to dig a hole right through the rise. providing complete protection from almost any kind of fire. The so-called Florentine hat is well proven. Here are a bunch of mounds all alike. Let's look closer. That is the Florentine hat. Beneath it, observing, is a sniper. This hat is well suited for the observer, but less so for the sharpshooter because the hat must be carefully pushed aside before taking aim. And this movement easily gives away the position. Here is a relaxing look at what seems to be merely a peaceful landscape. Yet, in reality, a whole platoon is hidden here. Almost every sort of camouflage is represented.
Thus, do snipers conceal themselves? In defense, the sharpshooter has several positions he can reach under cover, moving freely in his company sector. After delivering a well-aimed shot that has to be a kill, the sniper changed his position to a location far removed from the old spot. Getroffen. He soon finds targets at another position without having given himself away. It's important to avoid raising dust in front of the position. When possible, set up fake positions. They deceive the enemy as he's trying to spot the sharpshooter. What's done after firing is of great importance. Much too rapid movement. It gives away the position. Correct. Stay motionless in your position, then withdraw as if in slow motion. This spot can probably be used again. When shooting from houses, never stand by the door or window. Muzzle flash and smoke give you away. Stand deep in the room, shooting with a rifle platform. Here's another mistake. The enemy would immediately recognize that one could shoot only from the open window on the right. Correct. Open all windows. For shooting from a thatched roof, make many holes. On a shingle roof, remove more than one shingle. Hinter den Buschendeckung gehen. Noch mehr den Kopf herunter. Halt, nicht zu weit, sonst können Sie nicht weiter beobachten. Nach vorn beobachten. Was sehen Sie mich denn an? Das Gewehr tarnen. Noch besser tarnen. Hack runter. Hände beschmieren, die leuchten ja bis sonst wohin. Und dann... Fertig zu einer Pause. Auf, wegtreten zur Pause. Müssen ab, Kragen auf, oberster Knopf auf. Nehmen Sie mal die Beine weg hier. So. Na? Für Sie war die Pause ja auch eine Lösung, was? Mir macht sowas nichts aus. Nur... Na, was? 
habe ich mir das anders vorgestellt beim Scharfschützenlehrgang. Nicht so viel Kleinkrämerei, wir rein in die Sache. Und sofort ein fertiger Scharfschütze, hä? Hm. Gleich auf bewegliche Ziele schießen, was? Schön wär's ja, aber die Ausbildung ist nun mal das Wichtigste beim Scharfschützen. Immer wieder lernen und dann noch draußen Erfahrungen sammeln. Immer noch gibt es zu verbessern. Ich kann ein Beispiel erzählen, wo es neben der Feinarbeit auch auf schnelle Entschlusskraft ankam. Und auch viel Tarnen. Was? Ja, auch das gehört dazu. Also, wir waren im Angriff. Und unser Zug wurde durch ein gut verstecktes, bolschewistisches Lehramgehen niedergehalten. Darf ich mal noch hier? So war die Lage. Hinter uns waren Buschkuren. The platoon was here, facing open terrain. I was with the group covering the flank. Somewhere about 300 meters up was the MG. Our officer sought the MG while the platoon lay under cover. Magazin. Durchgehen. So befugt, feindliches LMG vernichten. Verstanden. LMG ausschalten. Ich schwärzte Gesicht. I blackened my face and hands and was totally camouflaged. Durchgeben! Feindliche Lehmgestellung nicht zu erkennen! Nun schob ich Then langsam I slowly climbed the tree, avoiding any sudden movements. I spotted the MG's powder smoke. Ich hab das MG. Aber von hier kriege ich die Kerle nicht. Ich muss sie umgehen. Los, Rebert, MG vernichten. Red MG still had our platoon been down. Now, I was right on the Reds' flank. I set up my stand to give me a stable shooting platform. Die 
Inferno. I lined up my sights. I had the head of the gunner right in my crosshairs. The second Bolshevik knew where the shot came from, from the hole. He ducked. I fired high. These branches offered him ideal cover. It was all or nothing now. My shoes, a lady. We stand here under fear. Oh, ah! Ah! The platoon didn't hear my warning. Tickung. The platoon was a perfect target. In letzter Sekunde könnte man dieses Erlebnis nennen. Ja. Aber so schnell ist der Feind nicht immer erledigt. Ich hatte da einen Tag, wo erst fast alles warten und beobachten vergeblich schien. Es war im Westen. Wir waren in der Verteidigung Where was the observer who was directing their artillery fire? We'd had an eye on a knocked out enemy tank in front of our lines. My observer signaled that he wanted to take a look elsewhere. He crept back while I kept watch. Hours passed, but I never let the field ahead of me out of my gaze. Suddenly, I noticed a piece of paper in front of the tank that wasn't there before. I checked again with my naked eye. I told the company commander. The stick paper is the evidence that the B-stelle in the destroyed Panzer is. Good observed, Jürgensen. Morgen reichen wir das Ding aus. Noch war es zu dunkel. It was still too misty. Wir warteten. We waited. The CO gave the gunner a sign. Jetzt sehe ich ihn genau. Feuer bereit. Feuer frei. Treffer.
The CO looked at me. I signaled that I was ready to fire. Then the Tommies bailed out. The first one ran. I aimed ahead of him and hit him. The second man looked in the direction of the shot and he was hit too. My observer, meanwhile, noticed that the Tommies were regrouping. Probably to relieve their men up front. My observer lay behind a blind. I use the slit trench for cover. I use the binoculars. I signaled my observer that I wanted to wait longer. And my waiting paid off. An officer suddenly appeared. And the sharpshooter is supposed to destroy the most important targets. I used my spade for a platform. Then I brought my rifle up carefully and took aim. The officer looked carelessly over the trench. That was my moment. Then I stealthily left my position. The English soldier saw a bush moving and thought his enemy was behind it. The trick worked. We got back unharmed. The blind hid my observer's withdrawal from view. He dragged it carefully back with him. Toward evening, the sharpshooter spoke with Wagner from the neighboring company. We had a common problem at our junction. Wagner was sending out a combat group to knock out an enemy bunker. We wanted to watch.
pistols. The What's combat up? group couldn't see the enemy watch coming up. Then our men were spotted. German. I decided to act on my own. The apple. We wiped the enemy watch out. Der Stoßdruck knackte den Bunker und konnte sich ohne Verluste lösen. Sechs Abschüsse an einem Tag, mindestens doch. Ja, die war. Dieses Erlebnis könnte man fette Beute nennen. Ja. Wenn ich Jagdflieger wäre, dann hätte ich bei der Rückkehr mächtig gewackelt. <lacht> Sie, Herr Unteroffizier, sind doch mit 64 Abschüssen einer der besten Scharfschützen. Hatten Sie auch ein spannendes Erlebnis? Das sind ja wie Kintop. So ist das nicht. Es geht immer aufs Ganze dabei. Hier. Nach meinem 64. Abschuss wurde ich zum Unteroffizier befördert. Und bekam außerdem diese Widmung vom Kommandierenden General. Kann ich mal sehen? Die Sache war. Mit einer Kompanie hielt ein bolschewistischer Abschütze, ein wahrer Höllenhund, alles im Schach. Um sein Feuer herauszulocken, war der Scharfschütze Ulbricht auf eine gute Idee. A puppet was carried across the trench. Los, Wetter! From the enemy side, it was supposed to look like a German soldier moving down the trench. But the Bolshevik sniper was wise to us. It was evening. A comrade stood up. Here's the enemy's view of the German trench. Everything seems calm. There. A German soldier carelessly keeping watch. He's much too high. Let's take a closer look at this suicide candidate. It's really a puppet that through obtrusive movement is supposed to draw enemy sniper fire. The puppet must be natural in its movement since the enemy is hard to fool. While the observer operates the puppet, the sharpshooter is already lurking. Ivan doesn't fall easily for such primitive tricks. The head must be imaginative. That looks more genuine. And so it's made. A little inventiveness and some wood are enough to construct the puppet.
And as usual, the sniper is there on the prowl. Here too, there is close cooperation between sharpshooter and observer. Here, a bush divides. An observing soldier becomes visible. A food tin and a painted card are all the resourceful snipers used here. And here is a sharpshooter firing. Another ruse made with just a few materials. This prop scissors telescope is also enough to draw enemy fire. always trick the foe with natural looking movements. And what have we here? A smoking grenadier made from simple materials. A sharpshooter must be imaginative. He must always be coming up with new deceptions. This tree climber will not lack in effectiveness. What was that? Naturally, a sniper in a tree. No, a ruse. The weapon must be a self-loader fired from the ground with a cord, which isn't easy in combat. A bunker with a loophole. A sniper appears and shoots. And yet, it's just a puppet. Serviced by a sharpshooter in a foxhole. These excellent puppets have been constructed with ordinary materials. In defense, props are set up at night. At dawn, they come into use. Again, the observer operates the puppet while the sharpshooter watches. Ah. 
there. I'm Tommy. A uh, Tommy. The enemy has let himself be fooled. A German sniper spots him firing. So trickery and flawless marksmanship lead to success. Sharpshooters, you've learned enough from your frontline experiences and from our marksmen. Now your snipers and observers. Comrades who stick together in the face of death. Everything depends on the good teamwork between sharpshooter and observer. At all times, one must help the other. One stands back of the other to the last drop of blood. Each is a comrade to his fellow. German sharpshooters, the unseen weapon. 